record to reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is appearing uh, today in street clothes. He has a dress shirt and a tie on. He's also wearing a mask. And I don't consent to being called that name for the record. As this paperwork I accept for value and return for value as it does not state the correct name. It states the name of my client, the straw man. I am not this name in all capital letters. I do not identify by that name, nor do I know that individual. Your objection is noted it's baseless in law and fact, and <coughs> that is simply a caption on a pleading uh, that on is the not my name. final jury instructions. That is not my name for the record. All right, the record should reflect, Mr. It. Brooks, I'm talking. The record I should reflect that at 3.23 p.m. yesterday, all of the verdict forms were printed off and provided to Mr. Brooks. I also uh, provided him with an excerpt from the bench book on closing arguments. Um, I left a copy on the state's table as well and a second copy on the defense table today as well so that uh, I thought that would be helpful information as we are um, about that time in the proceeding for the parties to uh, give their closing arguments. Of course, prior to that, the court will be reading through the final jury instructions. Um, the parties were also given uh, the updated version following the jury instruction conference yesterday as well. Uh, the total number of pages for that is 107. The court will be reading from the first 73 pages this morning. I do anticipate having to take uh, one or two breaks before I complete all of that. I'm, my plan is to do that uh, and then take the lunch break. Uh, and then when we come back from lunch to have the parties provide their, uh, they're not opening, their closing arguments. And then following the closing arguments, uh, the court has the final uh, jury instructions which go through uh, the closing instruction, uh, instructions 460, 484, and all of the verdicts, uh, and then the instruction to the uh, jury um, 515 about their verdicts needing to be unanimous, and then um, selection of a presiding juror. The very last page, 107, actually is not read until the close of the case and only following um, receipt of verdicts or some other type of disposition that would result in the conclusion of the case. It's the instruction after the verdict is received. So uh, page 107 is not something that will be read uh, today. As indicated yesterday, I will be selecting the alternates by random selection. We'll use the tumbler um, and uh, select three numbers out of that. But that will be done after all of the instructions are read and the parties have an opportunity to give their closing arguments. Uh, Your Honor, I accept for value and return for value any uh, documents that you just alluded to. I have not seen them. Mr. Brooks, if you haven't seen them, that is by your choice. They were provided to you. I know on multiple occasions yesterday you threw items into the garbage can. Um, the court retrieved the final jury instructions. I personally didn't, I had someone do it, had them placed on the table this morning and any other items you threw in the garbage. So is that is that the paperwork that I had to stay here for over an hour for? Sir, I'm not gonna discuss any further what we did during the jury instruction conference. The jury's going to be brought jury out a little conference. bit later. It, there was a conference. We talking about the proceedings from yesterday or after you had uh, told us we recessed Mr. for Brooks. the night? I'm referring to after you called recess for the night yesterday. That's what I'm referring to. Those I, was, documents, I was put in the holding cell for over an hour because they said it was some paperwork that needed to that be. That is correct, sir. You were kept there in order for my clerk, who had to finalize 76 verdicts, two each, one not guilty, one guilty and provide those to the parties. Um, that and so the, that's why you were kept there so those could be handed to you. My understanding is they were. I would need a bailiff to confirm for me whether he took those back to his cell 
or if they were put on his desk because he left them um, in the holding cell. Left them in what holding cell? In here? I have to look through his paperwork to see if they're on here. What holding cell are you referring to, Your Honor? Behind the door. I, I didn't leave anything in that holding cell. I was just trying to figure out why I was in there so long. Are those the verdicts? Yeah. All right, he has those. Then. Thank you. Is this the paperwork that was just put on my, it was paperwork on uh, the desk when I came in that was on top of my folders? Mr. Brooks, I know that they were, you were given the opportunity to take them to your cell because that is what I was advised. Whether you did that or not, I don't know. That's but they not are I'm, also on your desk now. I accept for value in return for value any documents. We did discuss all of the jury instructions and the verdicts yesterday. So what was discussed when I was in the cell for over there an hour? There was no discussion, sir. The court was in recess. Madam Clerk was simply finalizing the paperwork <coughs> based upon the discussion that was held on the record in open court yesterday. I was told that I had to stay there uh, per you. Yes, so that we could provide them to you and you would have an opportunity to take them back to your cell. But can they, you wish can they to have been them? delivered to the jail? All right. Um, I don't believe there's any other preliminary issues there we are. need to address other than an advisement I will have for Mr. Brooks. But let me turn to the parties and ask if there's anything preliminary to uh, this phase of the trial, which is the jury instructions, the verdicts, um, and closing arguments from the state. Your Honor, thank you. All right, anything else from you, sir? Yes, there is. Um, yesterday, I stressed to the court numerous times about me not understanding the proceedings um, and essentially how uh, decisions are being made on my behalf without my understanding or giving consent. The court made various rulings yesterday. I made findings and ultimately made some determinations. I stand behind the record that was made. I'm not going to explain it further. So a lot of those decisions were made when I was not present in the courtroom. I was in the other courtroom, correct? That is true, sir. Is that correct? Um, the record will indicate when those were made and where you were. I can't, um, I can't see the record, though. How, how am I supposed to know what the record will reflect? <laughs> Sir, the decisions were made yesterday. I'm not revisiting them today. They need to be revisited, and they, it also needs to be talked about uh, subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven for the record. I'm still trying to understand, Your Honor, how um, you made a, le a, a, a judicial determination on my behalf, which I did not give consent to, to, as you say, I forfeited my right to testify, which I never did. I never said I wanted to. I never said I didn't want to. But that decision was made for me. Also, the decision, the decision for the defense to rest its case was made for me, which I did not consent to, nor did I say I was ready to rest, or nor did I say I did was re ready to rest. I'm trying to understand how all these decisions are being made with, without my consent, without me waiving any rights. I'm, I'm not understanding how, because none of my answers were unresponsive. I just didn't answer the way that Your Honor wanted me to answer, but I stressed yesterday if I don't understand something, how am I supposed to answer a question that I don't under, understand fundamentally? It's not, it's not me saying yes or no, and it's not me saying, okay, I want to waive this or that right. And I'm not, I'm not trying to make an argument with you in any way. I'm just seeking to understand how these decisions are made if I'm letting the court know and I'm putting the court on notice, hey, I don't understand this or I don't understand that. <coughs> Any other things? Otherwise, I'm prepared to address each one of those. Yeah. Um, 
there was a, a mention a mention of um if there is a conviction in this matter there is a mention of um sentencing which i'm assuming there be a some type of um, um people may want to speak i know I'm, if there is a conviction on my half people would definitely want to uh, address address the court um there'll be a lot of affairs that need to be put in order obviously on my side um if it pleases the court if there is a conviction in this matter i would like the uh the sentencing to to not be so quick i'm, I'm asking if it pleases the court for the sentencing to be held off into a later time not a day or two or a week just so that affairs can be put in order properly and so that the people that want to come in and, and speak will have the opportunity to address the court if that fair pleases request, sir if that pleases i think that's uh, a fair request i thought about that some more overnight that it, in the event there is a conviction that um i would like to give the parties an opportunity to do that i have no idea how many people would want to speak my inclination would be again and i'm this is not set in stone if there is a conviction um, on any of these counts i may ask the parties to just come back in on monday october 31st with uh, kind of a proposed plan of how many people do you think will speak on your behalf how long do you think it will take um, so that i can look at my calendar and then uh, set aside the appropriate amount of time. I certainly don't want to rush anything, and I think that's a fair request that you're making. Thank you. All right. Um, so with all of that then, sir, subject matter <coughs> jurisdiction, I decline to address that further. I stand by the written decision um, that I've made previously. Um, as far <coughs> as the rulings made yesterday regarding uh, your ability or inability to present further testimony and witnesses, and to testify yourself. The court did make various rulings and findings that you had forfeited your right to do so by conduct. I'm not gonna further explain the law or these prior rulings to you. I stand behind them, and I believe I made a very, very clear record. Um, so to the extent that you are asking me to reconsider any of that, uh, that's how I would interpret your statements here today, I decline to do so. So, Your Honor, would that be, um, that's still not, I have no understanding to um, why I wasn't given the opportunity to place certain things into evidence. I, I have virtually nothing, nothing, zero evidence that I was able to place into evidence, nothing. I disagree with that, sir. You called, I think, nine witnesses on your behalf um, on various issues, including uh, the honking of the horn, the window tinting. You cross-examined many of the state's witnesses about police barricades and the presence of police. So you did I'm, present evidence. I'm speaking to the terms of everything that um, Your Honor asked me to do. You told me to... Uh, put everything that um, I needed to present to the course in writing. You you made that ruling. You told me that's what I needed to do. I did that. Um, I, Mr. Brooks, you may have interpreted that. I did not require you to do that as far as evidence in the case. I very expressly told you there are rules of procedure and rules of evidence that govern exhibits, <clears throat> testimony, witnesses, etc. What I told you is that any requests that you have related to the case, if it's a motion, be put in writing. I specifically referenced the statute 80201 regarding how a motion is made and what it should contain, meaning it has a very express uh, request for relief and states the law and the facts upon which the request is being made. Um, again, I'm not going to revisit the prior rulings. Um, I stand behind them, and to the extent that the record does not have, uh, meaning the record before the jury and the evidence does not have certain pieces of information, evidence or testimony that you uh, 
wanted to present, um, you forfeited that opportunity <coughs> yesterday based upon your conduct. How did I forfeit the opportunity? Again, I'm not going to revisit that, sir. What I, I will forfeit, tell you is this. How did I forfeit this the opportunity? This jury is here. To be able to place into evidence, Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to be... debate this further. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to debate. I'm trying to understand. To respect the fact that I've made rulings, Your Honor, that's that's you it's made not a my judicial job determination. To explain them you made to it. You. I'm not asking you to explain anything. You're misinterpreting what I'm trying to ask you and trying to tell you. You're misinterpreting it. With all due respect, Your Honor, I when you tell me. This is what you need to do. I'm going to take it by what you're telling me that I need to do. If I needed to make anything request wise or anything that I needed to present to the court, it has to be in writing. You told me to do that. I did it. You also brought up when I asked numerous times before before. When would I have a chance to present things into evidence? You told me we were not at the evidentiary phase of the trial yet. So I took that as saying, okay, well, at some point I will have the opportunity to place things in the evidence that need to be put in evidence for the record. So I, I'm not understanding how a decision can be made for me to actually forfeit being able to put things into the record that need to be placed into the record. All these things are, are, are things that, quite frankly, allow me to put on a defense. Uh, things that need to be known, things that should be in the record as far as filings, as far as uh, 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 ICFs that I was told to by you to address certain ICFs either to you or to the clerk of courts which I did and received copies for all of them except until last week. It was a few of them that I didn't receive copies for that I'm still wondering why I haven't received those copies when I received the copies of all the ones before that. But in, in, in terms of that, I did what Your Honor asked me to do. And these are things that were part of my defense that needed to be placed into the record. So where my confusion comes in is not being able to place those things into the record. Things Mr. that, Brooks, things that clearly help my defense. I stand by my ruling. I'm not revisiting it. To the extent that you claim lack of understanding or your lack of consent, it's been made abundantly clear on this record, your position on that. I'm not revisiting it. I'm further advising you that when this jury comes out, I expect that you will honor the decisions that were made, not agree, but you will honor them and not interrupt the court or these proceedings as I instruct the jury. So how am I supposed to put these things in the record that need to be in the Mr. record? Mr. Brooks, I'm well aware of the effect my ruling had, and I'm not going to debate it with you further. I'm ju I just want to know how am I supposed to get these things on the record? How am I supposed to, because the filings that I gave, you actually filed and gave me the copies back. So are those in the record? Mr. Brooks. I'm, I'm just, no longer I'm going just seeking to talk to understand. about this. I'm just seeking to understand. Mr. Brooks, I cannot explain procedure or evidence the filings that or I the filed. rulings or I'm the asking law a question, to Your Honor. you. I'm merely asking a question. The filings that I presented to Your Honor. Any filings with the this court. court are in the court record. That does not mean they're evidence, sir. And I've told you That's that previously. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, are the filings part of the record? The filings that were filed in time stamp that were notarized that I presented to the court, all the filings, the appearance bonds, the, the statement of particulars, the, the notice of special appearance, the, the, uh, the, the court docket sheet, your oath of office, everything that I tried to present into the record, how am I not able to make them part of the record? So they were filed because you, you presented them to the court during the course of this case. Anything that was not offered as an exhibit and received during the evidentiary phase is not evidence in this trial. That's what I attempted to do, and you told me that I couldn't. You told Mr. me, Mr. Brooks, I am bringing this jury Your Honor, out. Listen with all to respect, me. you told me that we were not at the evidence. When I said I have uh, exhibits as well, I have stuff that I want to put into the record. I even asked. I said, 
Mr. Brooks. May I give an off, a offer into evidence? I'm these, going to stop you things. once again. I'm not going to have this discussion and debate. The evidentiary phase of this trial is closed. It should not be, though, the Your jury. Honor. I understand your lack of consent, your objection so when would I is be able noted to put, for the when record. When would I be able to put vital information into the record, which I haven't had the opportunity to that do? That opportunity has closed for you, sir. So so you're saying basically you're, prejudice, you're prejudicing my defense by me not being able to present things into evidence, offer into evidence, filings and important paperwork and documents. Mr. Brooks, and you How forfeited not, your right to do that by your conduct yesterday, and I stand behind that decision. I asked, I'm going I asked to do before the yesterday, sir. Your Honor, I, I asked this following. before yesterday. You have not honored my request to you that you cease debating me on prior rulings I'm not trying to debate. I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand why my due process is being violated. Mr. Brooks, the record speaks for itself. No, the record I'm does not. I am going to take it, it a five-minute recess. When I come back out, the jury will also be coming out. I'm advising you, there will be no, there will be no multiple opportunities where I uh, give you to conform your conduct to the rules of decorum. Well, then, and then just hold me in contempt, you, then, Your Honor. You are hold hereby me in contempt because I didn't even. I'm trying to if seek you to understand. Start talking about subject matter jurisdiction or any of these other. It issues needs to be addressed, or Your Honor. In any way, we're not talking about subject matter jurisdiction. We're talking about why my why my due process I has will been violated. Excuse the jury, and you will be removed Your to Honor, the other courtroom. We're talking about the Fourteenth Amendment. Section right. I'm one. taking a five minute break. We are. Your Honor, recess. I don't when agree I to a estoppel. I don't agree to a estoppel. Your Honor, as a